former president and convicted criminal, Donald Trump is apparently trying to distance himself from Project 2025, taking to, of course, Truth, truth, essential. He writes, I know nothing about Project 2025. I have no idea who is behind it. I disagree with some of the things they're saying, and some of the things they're saying are absolutely ridiculous and abysmal. Anything they do, I wish them luck, but I have nothing to do with them. Ah, yes, I, I disagree with them, but I, I wish them luck. Wait, what? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Um, look, that right there makes me think, no, he, he's, he's definitely lying. Um, Donald Trump would like nothing more than to enact Project 2025. Why? It's because of how much power it would give him. He doesn't care about anything else other than power. So uh, how would this give him power? Uh, well, it relies on unitary executive theory, which would allow Trump to fire tens of thousands of civil servants by basically reclassifying them as political appointees. They currently are not. So that change would allow him to, again, fire them and replace them. These are the people that make government run. Replace them with political hacks, okay, political appointees. Uh, and so it's funny, you, you know, it, 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 this guy... This guy, he's going to tell me, okay, the guy who got famous for, you know, his, uh, his catchphrase. You're fired. He can tell me that guy is going to uh, turn down the ability to fire everyone who is not loyal to him in the government if he wins again? <laughs> really? Come on. <laughs> Really? Oh, okay. Uh, now, the plan also calls for the president to take more direct partisan control of federal agencies, like the DOJ, the FBI, and Homeland Security. You know, the, the things that he has uh, railed against, these, you know, uh, agencies uh, that he claims are uh, doing political persecution and witch hunts against him. You're, you're going to tell me that this guy is like, oh, no, of, co of course not. I don't like what they're doing. Uh, I, I am completely distancing myself from that because that just sounds like a bridge too far. Ooh, no, mm, not at all interested. But good luck. Really? Really? Now, look, uh, here's the thing. Before the Supreme Court made their decision about immunity, I was saying that, look, he'd like Project 2025 and, and unitary executive theory so he can make these cases go away. Since he'll be immune if he becomes president, that's no longer much of an issue. But more importantly, now, even without that, he would still like that power because he could use that to use to basically stick the federal government, the DOJ, FBI, etc., on his political enemies. He would totally do that. So those are the things that Trump cares about. He cares about, first of all, protecting himself, and second of all, using the power to punish his enemies. That's it. Everything else is the right-wing wish list, and I don't think he really cares about that because, well, that helps other people, <laughs> right? Now, if it's politically advantageous, then, of course, I would like the power to do it, and, uh, you know, he would, he would do it. Um, and, and that's, again, that's the reality here, okay? That's why he would enact some of this right-wing wish list. Uh, in fact, look, uh, a lot of the stuff that he did about 64% of which actually came from suggestions from the Heritage Foundation, things that he did during his presidency. Uh, so, yes, he will enact parts of that wish list if it helps him politically, okay? Uh, so, that said, Trump says, I don't know who's behind this. I, I, I have no idea. Well, I, it's pretty clear it's the Heritage Foundation, headed by Kevin Roberts, who described the plan as permanently institutionalizing Trumpism. And then uh, you also have uh, other Trump loyalists and senior advisor John McKenty being directly involved in the project. Uh, you also have former Trump officials like Project 2025 Director Paul Danz, who served at Trump's chief of staff, the Office of Personnel Management, and Associate Director Spencer Crichton, who was once Trump's special assistant. But, you know, I, I don't know who's behind all this. Ah, U.S. News & World Report also reported that Trump had echoed several of the policy priorities during rallies and campaign appearances, and his team has not disavowed it. Not only have they not disavowed it, Trump's own super PAC has been running ads promoting Project 2025. So, what, does he really think that they were all that stupid? 
Oh, well, maybe he does. I mean, definitely his followers, <laughs> right? Probably thinks those people are idiots. Uh, and hey, he might be right. Uh, <laughs> and then again, they also might really believe that they want Project 2025. Um, which is funny because uh, part of that would be to literally outlaw porn. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, but look, when it comes to the people who are paying attention to this right-wing fascist, you know, wish list, we know the truth. We know the truth. Um, Elena, uh, Elena Treen uh, writes on X, Trump distanced himself from Project 2025 run by the Heritage Foundation, which lays on an extremely conservative roadmap they want Trump to adopt should he win the election. Many people involved in Project 2025 are close to Trump uh, world and have served in his previous administration. Robert Reich uh, writes, Trump is now desperately trying to distance himself from Project 2025, claiming he has no idea who's behind it. Don't be fooled. The playbook is written by more than 20 officials Trump appointed in his first term. It's the clearest vision we have of a second Trump presidency. Mehdi Hassan writes, what's revealing about Donald Trump loudly disavowing Project 2025 and falsely denying any knowledge of it is that clearly he knows how damaging it can be to his election bid. So why on earth did neither Biden nor the CNN moderators bring it up at the debate last week? So for one, let me address like how damaging it is. Yeah, it turns out the American people, by and large, do not agree with the things that are outlined in Project 2025. The more people read about it, the more they hate it. So Donald Trump being someone who uh, A-B tests his audience with talking points and things like that, he might see the, the, the negative press on this and be like, mm, I don't want anything to do with that. Not openly anyway. <laughs> We're still going to do it, but you know, publicly, I don't want anything to do with it because I want to win this election and first and foremost, protect myself. Okay, because again, <laughs> Donald Trump, the person that he thinks about the most is Donald Trump. <laughs> Let's be honest. Uh, so getting to the second thing, why, did, uh, why didn't Biden or, or any of the moderators on CNN talk about Project 2025? Uh, well, uh, for Biden, he could barely speak about anything <laughs> during the debate. He said at one point, we beat Medicare. We... Oh, dear God. Uh, uh, <laughs> thinking that he might bring up or that he would be able to bring up Project 2025 was just wishful thinking. Uh, see, uh, it, 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 see, of course, uh, the, the debate happened at like nine o'clock at night and Biden's like, I gotta be in bed at like eight o'clock. <laughs> it's, it's, it's past my bedtime, okay? Uh, of course I'm not gonna be able to function. Oh, all right. It's, uh, oh, so, and, and he's asking to be president for four more years, great. Uh, not only that, but let's get to the moderators, right? The CNN moderators were just too scared to do it, to bring this up. And honestly, let's let's be clear. I don't I don't necessarily think that it's their job to bring up Project 2025. When it comes to fact checking, yes, but that's also Joe Biden's job. Joe Biden's job to bring this up, and Joe Biden's job to bring up that, and then contrast it with his own vision of what the next four four years or what the you know future of the country is going to be. He couldn't do any of that. Okay. Uh, and that's uh, part of the reason why it's such a disaster, that debate was. Um, now, thankfully, getting back to the media here, they're starting to talk about Project 2025 in a pretty big way. And that's good. We need more of that. So much so that apparently it has compelled Trump to have to lie about it. Because, as I said before, the more people find out about this right-wing wish list, just like a lot of their policies, uh, conservative policies, they find out, Oh no, that, that's, not, that's not something that we want. We do not want the country to look like this. No, we don't want Christian nationalism. No, we don't want porn bans. No, we don't want mass concentration camps for immigrants. No, we don't want any of that stuff. Get this out of here. And it, again, it forces people like Trump to try to distance themselves from it, even though this was literally written for him for a second Trump term. So to try to distance yourself from this when there's so much that links Trump and Project 2025, I think is a losing bet as long, as long as the media stays on it and continues to point out that they are absolutely inextricably linked. And if you get Donald Trump, if you vote for Donald Trump, you're voting for Project 2025.
Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe, hit the bell icon in order to get notified whenever a new video is released. And if you want to support independent, progressive media through this difficult time, where it seems like everybody is shut down, you can become a member on our YouTube page, you can become a subscriber on Facebook, or you can go to my Patreon, it's patreon.com slash Jeff Waldorf. Thank you.